Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will show you how to parse on Mythic Gahoon. So I killed this boss for the first time in probably 4 weeks, we've been kind of putting off killing this boss because he's honestly not that fun to farm and, you know, with the holidays and everything, we've been just kind of avoiding it. But I killed this boss this week, I got a rank 6 on it, and I thought I'd put out a video since this is the last boss in the Let's Parse series. So before we get started with the boss itself, I have a quick announcement to make. My Discord that was previously only available to Twitch subs and patrons is now open to the public. So if you'd like to join my Discord, then make sure to check out the link in the description box. Now for this boss, um, as far as setup goes, you can either run like triple archive or you can run one of the Remorseless Winter traits and double archive. Both of those combinations will work just fine. If you ha happen to have more goonies in phase 1, then I would run one remorseless trait. If your raid is kind of efficient at cleaning those up, then just run triple archive. And as far as secondary trait, you know, just go for overwhelming power. Or if you're progging this boss, Gut Ripper can help out a tremendous amount. If a lot of people in your raid have Gut Ripper on progress, they will help out a lot in the last phase, which is quite a big damage check. Now, for this fight uh, in general, it will be pretty RNG on if you get a good rank or not. And you kind of have to use your cooldowns in a suboptimal way if you want to parse on it. So what you will see in this video is definitely a farming strategy rather than a progress strategy as far as cooldowns go. And I will point out where the differences are. Now in this particular raid, I was running the orb in group 5, which means I only have to run once. And that is probably the most ideal spot. But as a DK, I ran every single other position except for uh, two, I believe. But you can make all of them work. So on the opener, I pre-pot and then I just run in, use two global cooldowns and then Pillar of Frost. That's just to make sure that this dragon will fit into Pillar of Frost uh, because sometimes those ads die a little bit slower. Um, so you kind of run the risk of your Pillar of Frost running out. But if you wait 2 seconds on pull before popping your pillar, then it will be sure that you'll have it up. And then you just want to position yourself to kind of cleave all of the goonies at the same time. I happen to get hit by an orb there, but after that you basically just want to wraith walk over to the opposite side of the room, because that's where all of the adds will be spawning. Now here I'm getting chased around by a goonie, but here your main goal is to just stand around these adds, cleave as much as possible and wait for the third circle. Now when the third Dark Mark comes out, you they basically want to save up Runic Power and as soon as it goes out, all of the new adds will spawn. And this is the biggest wave of adds, so you definitely want to pop all your cooldowns here. Now I tend to position myself to kill these Cyclopean Terrors first, because that's just kind of what I did on progress. But if you want to get more cleave, you kind of want to position yourself in the middle of everything or like slightly on the edge, where you can cleave as many targets as possible. Now I got a little frustrated here because I had some targeting issues um, and my BOS wasn't as good as it should have been. So then I missed my cold hard proc in my Pillar of Frost. It was just kind of one thing led to the other um, and I made a few mistakes here and there. But here you basically just clean up the goonies. As you can see we don't really spawn that many. So basically before the beam is over all of the goonies are far dead and we just have time to set up for the second phase. If you're running group 5, you kind of want to save your Pillar of Frost, you don't want to use it at the end of that first phase. Uh, because as soon as the boss will be active, you're able to pop Pillar, and when your Pillar runs out, you're about ready to run the orb. So as soon as the boss becomes active here, I pop Pillar of Frost, just going with all my abilities. Um, you saw me run up to the boss before, and kind of start hitting him even though he was technically still immune. That's just to build some runic power because I was already sitting on those 6 runes, so it was just wasted resources if I wouldn't have. Now here I actually left a little late, typically I try to leave about 10 to 9 to 10 seconds before the orb spawns, that's a safe bet if you're on that side. That way I can wraith walk to the orb, pick up the orb, then death's advance, take the lock gate, and I will still have death's advance up to toss the orb to the next person and drop back down. Now there, since I left a little bit later, you could see that my death's advance actually ran out before I got to the other side of the gate. Now, 
Here are the first ad spawns and I usually try to pillar of frost remorse this winter, just cleave it as much as possible. Um, the rest of the DPS did a really good job at killing it, usually it lasts a little bit longer um, and I can get a little bit of cleave in. Um, but there, pretty much as soon as I pop my Pillar of Frost and Remorseless Winter, it just kind of got dragged out. So here what I'm looking at is I'm fishing for Howling Blast procs or Rhyme procs to hit that clump of Goonies. But I didn't get any procs while they were still at high HP and in decent range. So then we had kind of had to move away to bait this feast um, and I kind of lost the opportunity to hit everything. Now as soon as this second beam comes down, you want to Hungering Rune Weapon or Empower Rune Weapon and Breath of Sindragosa. But if at all possible, you don't want to pop your Pillar of Frost right away. Because if you pop it right away, you run the risk of it running out before those goonies actually spawn. And if that happens, you lose out on a ton of damage with your Howling Blast procs, with your Breath of Sindragosa since you're cleaving more targets. And of course with your Frostworm's Fury. So if your raid kills the, the big ad very quickly, like we do, then you're good to pop it at the beginning. If you're progging this, uh, then you probably want to wait about 3 to 4 seconds, probably before popping your Pillar of Frost, just to make sure it's up when the goonies spawn. Now as far as maximizing runic power gain, whenever the beam is coming down, you want to use AMS because that's going to boost your RP by a little bit. Um, and then you also kind of want to save up one Howling Blast proc to make sure that you have it whenever the Goonies spawn. Now again, we bait the feast. This is only our group 4 soaking. So from here on out, everything is pretty standard. I save up a little bit of runic power for this ad. Uh, as soon as it spawns, I go and start hitting it. Now when the ads spawn, about 5 seconds after they spawn, you will always get a wave. So you want to kind of jump in, hit it a few times, then kind of weave out of melee range because you know that the wave will be coming every single time. Now while they're moving that ad out, I can see the timer that a wave is coming and there was a melee or a healer I believe running right past me. So I chose to just stay in the puddle for a little bit to make sure that we don't get hit by the wave. Now, here is where the big damage difference and cooldown usage difference will come from. This is the last feast of phase 2. Now, ordinarily, on progress, you would only use Pillar of Frost here. So you would use Pillar of Frost, nuke down this add, um, and then you would have Breath of Syndragos at the very beginning of phase 3. If you're trying to parse, then you want to use all of your cooldowns here again. Because it is, it is a huge, huge, huge damage gain as far as parsing numbers are concerned. But as far as efficient damage is concerned, this is pretty much wasted damage. Like the boss is going to push no matter what. I popped all my cooldowns, I pumped a bunch of damage into the boss, but that damage doesn't matter. The boss was going to phase to phase three if I did that and even if I didn't. So that's just basically for a parsing strategy. If you're progging this fight, then definitely only use Pillar of Frost at that point. Now, I build up a little bit of runic power here, save up some runes. As soon as the boss is active, I Pillar of Frost. This is typically where we Bloodlust, um, but I don't have Breath of Syndragosa up, so I'm not going to use my second potion quite yet. So basically, I just kind of hit the boss, hit the boss, and here, the main thing is survival. We're running, I believe, six melee in uh, this run. So the area around the boss is a little crowded, but we make it work. So the biggest thing is just making sure that we avoid all of the AoEs, we help out with soaks if necessary, avoid the balls on the ground, and just hit the boss. So here our damage will be very very minimal um, until we get the Breath of Syndragosa back up. So here I actually would have been safe if I don't take that step forward, but I end up getting hit by a Bursting Boil. So with my gear level and eye level I can survive one hit. Um, if my protection is procced and I'm at decent amount of HP. So it's not that big of a deal, but it definitely puts a stress on the healers. So again here we duck out of melee range. As you can see there's a bunch of bunch of boils around there. So that Pillar of Frost, is, as you could see, I had it up for quite a while. Now Based on our kill time, I knew that if I popped that Pillar of Frost on cooldown and waited for my next one, which would have been 20 seconds after my BOS was active or came up, 
I would not have had it available. So I just decided to sit on it and use it as soon as my Breath of Sindragosa came up. Now I make a small mistake here. I thought my Arcade Torrent was still on cooldown for some reason and I didn't Arcane Torrent. And I also had to use my AMS on that previous wave because I got hit by a Pepperoni. So I didn't have that option of getting more Runic Power with my AMS. But the boss still goes down. I do 25k DPS. Um, and as you could see, most of that damage came from the first phase and the beams. So I did 12.5 million overall. And out of that, about 3.5 million was just the first phase. And that first phase takes a very, very short amount of time. So you can see how important it is to get a very, very good first phase and then get lucky procs during the beams because that is what will essentially make or break your damage overall. Now, if you have any questions for this fight, DK in particular, or you know, just Uldir in general, make sure to let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and sub to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.